welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at two alternatives to Adobe Illustrator, and specifically Inkscape, which is a free open source package available for Linux, Mac and Windows, as well as Affinity Designer, which is a relatively cheap application for Windows and Mac. Right, as we're looking at Adobe Illustrator alternatives, I thought we should start out in Illustrator itself, and so here we are in Illustrator CS5, which was one of the last versions you could buy. Adobe moved to a rental model after a CS6. And you can use Illustrator to create all kinds of different illustrations. I've used it for all sorts of things over the years, as you can see here, everything from book illustrations of things like boiler systems to a cloning sheep to a nuclear reactions, all the way through to producing things like wiring diagrams for videos, and even a Mr. Scissors I've reproduced in Illustrator so he could appear on an Explaining Computers t-shirt. Now, the most important thing to know about Illustrator is that it's a vector graphics application. And this means that Illustrator is used to create and manipulate artwork based on mathematical coordinates and formulas. In contrast, photo editing applications such as Photoshop store and manipulate images as arrays of pixels. But here in Illustrator, every part of this image is a mathematical object, as you can see here, and I can select them, I can go and manipulate them if I wish, go in there and change that path, give us the scissors rather strange shaped handles, let's uh, undo that. And I could, for example, also select both of the handles and change their colours. You could have blue handles or green handles or uh, Orange handles looks very strange to see Mr. Scissor with different coloured handles, doesn't it? But what I'm showing you here is one of the great benefits of working with vector-based graphics, because you've got complete control over every individual element. The other big benefit is that here I could zoom in as much as I liked and the image remains sharp, because everything here is stored mathematically. Vector-based images are resolution independent. And if we compare that to a bitmap image, here I've got a bitmap image of Mr. Scissors exported from the same artwork. And if I zoom in here, you will see that very quickly, we see the jagged edges of the pixel, so it, things break down. And uh, as hopefully all of this makes clear, vector-based graphics applications are the best software to use if you want to produce logos, diagrams, or other artwork that may be reproduced at different sizes or high resolutions, or where you need precise control of individual elements. But what if you don't want to rent Adobe Illustrator itself? What are the free or lower cost alternatives? Right, here we are on the website for Inkscape, which is a free open source vector graphics application. These are also exciting times for Inkscape, as whilst the package has been around since 2011, on May the 1st, 2020, we saw the release of Inkscape version 1.0. This was a major upgrade, and if you've not tried Inkscape for some time, it really is worth coming back and checking out the latest release. If we look under a download here, you'll see that Inkscape is available for Linux, Windows, and Mac. And here I'm running it in a Windows 10. Or if we transition to a, a Linux desktop, here is Inkscape running in Ubuntu 20.04. And it's worth noting you've got a lot of control of Inkscape's interface and configuration. So for example, if I look here under Edit and uh, Preferences, we can see under, for example, a Theme, we've got control of uh, all kinds of things, including the size of the different icons on different toolbars, which is the sort of functionality I really like to see in many other applications. As it's probably obvious already just looking at the, the screen here, Inkscape is a very sophisticated application. And if I cycle through the menu, as you'll see, there's a lots and lots and lots of functionality available, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of functionality available. But uh, everything basically comes down to creating paths or shapes and manipulating them. So for example, here we have a, a basic a rectangle shape, we have a, an ellipse shape, which you can constrain to be a circle using a control key like that. Keyboard shortcuts are very important to use in Inkscape. And we've also got this fantastic star shape, which I really like being able to create those, those wacky stars. And once you've created shapes like this, you can obviously move them around and manipulate them as you wish. You can move them up and down in terms of their order using the page up and page down keys like that. And you can manipulate the shapes themselves. 
So for example, if we go here to the rectangle, we can uh, round the corners, which is rather good, isn't it? And we can even do that uh, elliptically. It doesn't have to be consistent on, on each side. We do a sort of a TV screen type thing like that if we want to. On the star, we can change uh, whatever you call that. You can have great fun manipulating the, the star. Let's just put it uh, over there. And uh, in terms of the uh, ellipse, the circle, you can uh, change the segments like this to create all kinds of objects. You can go inside if you don't want to have the segment there or that side, if you do want to have the segment. And uh, you can also combine shapes. Let's pick up uh, those two like uh, that. We can go to a path and a union, and they're now uh, one single shape. As you probably noticed over here, we can control the fill and the stroke and things like that. This has got a solid fill, it could be a gradient fill, it could be stripes if we really wanted it to be. Uh, we could turn the stroke off if you wanted. I've got a solid black stroke here so you can see it clearly on video. And again, this could be uh, all kinds of things, uh, gradients, things like that. And we can also manipulate the stroke style. It doesn't have to be solid, it could be dotted line if you really wanted it to be. It might be useful on some occasions. And you can change the join. If we just uh, go in nice and close on this, really nice and close like that, we could change that from being a straight angle to being a curve, or we have chamfers if we wish. So you've got lots and lots of control in Inkscape to have things just as you want them to be. And it doesn't take very long to take some basic shapes and to turn them into something rather familiar. To show you a few more things, there's a nice little tool up here under View called a Split View Mode. And what this does is it allows you to peel back and see the outline of geometry of your work or to see the final composition. And that can be very handy when you want to find bits of geometry, grab hold of them and manipulate them. So that's a nice feature to have available in the package. we just set up to show you something else. There we are, I've just created a nicer compound shape. Now if I go to Path, we've got a Path effects, which are really, really wacky. If I click on the Add Path Effects, you'll see there's lots and lots of different path effects here, which are all effects you can clearly add to paths. Let's add, for example, a simple one, that one there, the corners one there. And uh, there, if I just bring that up, you'll see slowly I can start to uh, round out the corners, which is uh, really wacky. It would take ages to do that if you had to do it all, all manually. Or you can turn those into chamfers if you want, or uh, inverse fillets, or whatever you want. So there's lots and lots of path effects available. They're great to be able to use. Let's show you something else again, because you don't have to use that the basic shapes create things. There is the pen tool. This basically draws a Bezier curve. So we draw out and that uh, creates this nicer Bezier curve uh, like that. Or we can use, if we wish, the, uh, the pencil tool, which is a really wacky like that. I've drawn a nice line there. That was drawn freehand, but it's actually created it again mathematically. You can see all the points on the curve. And it's not quite right, but that doesn't matter because you can go to path and uh, simplify, and maybe even path and simplify again, and it'll take it down to having fewer handles. And we can now go in and manipulate these handles, work out exactly what it should be, get it all looking uh, beautifully nice and neat. You can play for hours with the handles here in a, in a package like uh, Inkscape. That wasn't right, was it? There we are. That's looking a bit better. Final thing I'll show you is text. Let's just create a piece of text. There we are, and you can probably guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the text and take the path, and we can do text and uh, put it on the path. And uh, there it is on the path. And uh, if we now select the path itself, we can go over here and we can manipulate the path, and the text, of course, will uh, go with it, which is uh, really cool. I could spend hours uh, manipulating this sort of stuff. That doesn't affect the text if all that one does. Hey, hello, I'm a piece of text. It's a, it's a fantastic application in Inkscape. You can really play with things to your heart's content to do really wacky things in terms of uh, illustration. Finally, a few words on import and export file formats. We can here bring in uh, Adobe Illustrator AI images. If I do uh, open, we can find, uh, there's Mr. Scissors, will he come in? Uh, it looks like he will, and uh, there we are. Mr. Scissors has uh, come into uh, Inkscape. And he's a manipulable as before. We could go in and we could take, take one of his blades and make it, oh, that's a bit strange, isn't it? Mr. Scissors with a, with a red blade. That's a rather wacky, rather different, isn't it? And uh, we can't uh, export, we can't save Adobe Illustrator files in uh, Inkscape, but we have got lots of other functionality. We can export as PNGs if we want bitmap images. And if we go to uh, Save or Save As here anyway, you'll see there's lots of different formats available. If I just scroll down all the different formats that we can uh, save as. 
And the default here is a SVG, or a Scalable Vector Graphics, in either Inkscape's own format or a plain format. But we've also got things like a Postscript and uh, lots of formats we can export in from Inkscape. So it really is a very well-featured Adobe Illustrator alternative. Next, we'll take a look at Affinity Designer from Serif, which you can obtain from affinity.serif.com. As you can see, this is paid software for Mac or Windows, with the normal price being about £49 or $50, although at the time I'm making this video, there's a 50% off offer. And there's also a free trial, as you can see, which is normally 10 days, although at the time I'm making this video, it's 90 days. Please note that I have no association with Serif and they've not paid me or asked me to include the software in this video. I'm just interested in trying out Affinity Designer. To get the free trial, you obviously just click on free trial twice for some reason, don't quite know why. And then you put in your details, your name, your email address, and they will email you a product key and a download link. And with everything installed and registered, you can run up the software as I've done here where one of the first things to strike you is all the different presets which were available. And to show you some of those, let's just draw in a, a rounded rectangle like that. I'll also add a piece of uh, text. There we are, nicely aligned as well. And if I select our rounded rectangle, let's give it, say, the uh, frost style, take the lettering and give it, say, one of the, uh, the gold styles. And uh, we've very quickly created something that looks uh, pretty professional. If we look under View here and a Studio and go to uh, Assets and turn that on, we could add, say, a petrol pump there like that, maybe add a, the uh, trash can there like that as well. And then if we go to, for example, Effects here, you'll see this is very Photoshop-like. We could add to this, say, a bevel and emboss, give it a bit more depth like that. Also, maybe do the same thing to our petrol pump. There we are. And uh, whilst clearly Affinity Designer was written for professionals. There's no doubt that Serif are also targeting consumers with this package who may want to create things that look good very quickly and easily. Having noted these points, it is worth making you aware that Affinity Designer lacks some of the most sophisticated features you will find in Illustrator or indeed over here in Inkscape. Here's an Inkscape running in a Windows. And also we've got more control, I think, in Inkscape of the layout of the package and things like icon sizes. You can't control those as well over in Affinity Designer. And you might therefore be thinking, Chris, why would I purchase Affinity Designer when Inkscape over here is free? And one of the main things I would point out that whilst Inkscape is very good indeed, there are occasions when you're using Inkscape where things uh, don't work quite right. There's a little bug. For example, a dialog box might open up in the wrong way. It won't actually function. I've never lost any work in Inkscape because of these problems, but I have had issues where I've had to, uh, for example, save my work, come out of the package, go back in again to make everything work properly. And you don't have those sort of things in a commercial piece of software like at Affinity Designer. To put things more broadly in context in the marketplace, it's also worth noting that for most users, to rent Adobe Illustrator costs about £240 or dollars a year or more, with the other big commercial package in this area, Corel Draw, also being a lot more expensive than the one-off purchase of Affinity Designer. Returning to the package, it really is a joy to use. The, uh, the feel of Affinity Designer is just great for creative work. And whilst there is a learning curve here, as there is for any package of this type, it doesn't take long to pick up the basics, so you can do things like drawing a quick cartoon character. In common with Inkscape, we can import Adobe Illustrator files. I've got, for example, here, here is a Mr. Scissors. As we saw him last, we can bring him in. No problems at all. There he is. Now in Affinity Designer, let's uh, again mess him up. Let's give him a different colored thing there. What should we pick? Something from uh, neons and pastels, perhaps, maybe. a. Uh, or oh, we're giving him, yes, that's quite a, quite a subtle change to uh, one of his blades there. And uh, when it comes to uh, saving files, if we go to here, file and uh, save as, you'll see the save format here is a Vinter Designer's own format, a .af design file. But uh, we can export in all kinds of formats. If we go to, uh, surprisingly enough, export, you'll see all the different settings are here in graphics. I don't really like this across the top thing. It is 
nice, I guess. It's quick, but uh, it does make me wonder about all the other formats that aren't here. And if we click on more, we can see all the formats we can export in in this proper list. Whereas you can see we can export in things like PNG and JPEG if we want to do a raster, to do a bitmap graphics. And then we've also got lots of other formats for a structured graphics, SVG as we had in the Inkscape, uh, Postscript, uh, PDF, etc. So you've got no lack of file formats you can export to here in Affinity Designer. As I've demonstrated in this video, both Inkscape and Affinity Designer provide credible alternatives to Adobe Illustrator. And personally, I'd be happy to use either of them for my vector-based illustration. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.